Okay, so today I'm gonna to keep working on the coilover conversion on the Ranger here. Previous video, I got the coilovers all mocked up and kind of lowered the front end, see where I wanted that thing to sit. I just have them resting in there right now. There's a bolt going through the bottom eyelet and it's just kind of resting on this top uh, tower over here. So what I'm gonna do now is take them back out and I'm gonna open up this top section here. I'm gonna weld some tabs on the top so I can run a bolt through to mount it in there and then I'm gonna gusset the towers. I did get this T-bar kit for the bottom of the coilover. This basically runs through the bottom eyelet and then bolts onto the control arm. I thought these came in a set, but it just came as one, so I ordered another one that's on the way. But I should be able to get it at least mocked up and test fitted on the one side. And I also ordered a whole new control arm set. So it was like reasonably priced to do the upper and lower control arms, new tie rod ends, and all the bushings and everything. So it was like 230 bucks. So I just went ahead and did that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the towers and and get that stuff dialed in before I remove the old control arms. This frame does also have a large bump stop section there, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that stuff out. All right, so what I think I'm gonna do is just try to use this uni bit and see if I can just poke this hole a little bigger. Okay, so I did get this thing all hogged out. I did go through with the step bit. It wasn't quite big enough, so I opened it up a little bit, just with some flat cuts with the cutoff wheel. Same thing over on this side. Got it all opened up. So now what I'll do with this side is I'll actually test fit it and then tack weld in the tabs that I made. I just used this like piece of angle iron and then cut the corner out of it and bolted all the pieces together, made them the same size. That's what I'm gonna use for the tabs. So I did get these other tabs welded on on the driver's side now. Uh, I thought about it today and I do have a bottle of Argon. It's the weekend right now so I couldn't get my MIG gas filled but I did have a bottle of Argon from the TIG welder. Uh, so I just welded those on. I didn't use the TIG because I don't have a torch for it because my TIG torch actually got a hole in it so it was leaking gas. So I got to get a new one of those. So I'm just all screwed up today. But I'm glad I'm doing this. Look at this. This is the upper arm ball joint. So that guy's ready to go, and then the lower butt, lower ball joint, same kind of deal. Not quite as bad, but real, real loose, real floppy. And this one is just like real, just junk. So I'm gonna be doing all of these. The arms should be here tomorrow. So the kit that I got comes with the tie rod ends, this little bar upper and lower arms. So I'll go ahead and finish getting this stuff out on both sides. And then what I'll also do is cut this uh, bump stop arm off. Usually there's a rubber stopper that hangs down from here, prevents the arm from coming up. So I'll probably cut this thing, might actually box it in. Uh, and then when the arm is out of here, I'll be able to put the gussets on. Well, I'm not having any luck getting this stuff out. So I got the nut off of this bolt and then I ended up using a bottle jack to try to push the bolt out and the sleeve inside the bushing is seized to the bolt so it actually just pushed the bushing in this little piece of frame out. Now I'm just going to cut everything off. I got it almost all the way through now. Yeah, so there you go. It seized, must be seized uh, a little bit farther inside because this part of the bolt came out. So now I just got to try to figure out the rest of this. Okay, so I got the driver's side all done now and I got kind of motivated at like 10 p.m. last night and just started ripping on this stuff and it's kind of odd how that works. You spend a couple hours working on stuff and you're not really motivated and then all of a sudden you catch this wind and you want to work on it for hours. So worked on this till about 11.30 last night. It's next day now. I cut this out, I'll box that in, and then I did start to mock this up for where I'm gonna run the gussets. I'm basically just gonna run a little piece of flat stock down here and gusset it to the frame there. This is actually pretty strong, but I'll make it a little bit stronger. This side, last night I struggled with it for a long time. It took me about three hours 
to do everything that I was doing on here and it was a long time just to get the arms out and I had to cut a bunch of stuff and it was it was kind of a disaster. So I set myself a goal to try to get the passenger side done in an hour today and it was 2.16 when I started working on it. I was fully expecting it to take a while. It took me 15 minutes to get everything apart. All the bolts popped right out. This side is a little bit easier to work on as far as like getting the ball joints out because I've taken this side apart multiple times to do differential and axles removal. Like when I took the four wheel drive out and then I put it back in, I've had this side apart multiple times so it came apart really quick. I could just pop the ball joints out no problem. So yeah, it's uh, 2.45 now, I got done at 2.31. The upper and lower control arms say they're gonna be here today, but today is Sunday, so I don't know if they're actually gonna be delivered today or not. So what I'm gonna do here is just kinda clean this up. Uh, so get ready for the gussets, just like the other side. I'll probably go through and try to clean up some of the other rust. Cut this section out, that's for the bump stop. Get all that stuff done, and then I'll try to paint it. And we'll go from there. Alrighty, so we got two of the gussets welded in on this side. I think what I'm probably going to do is like attach that piece there just so it's not a weird looking corner. I'll probably just put a little piece in there. I did cut that one at a 45 just because I don't like it sticking out at a 90 like that. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that one. But that's just being picky, but that's kind of what it looks like so far. Took a little bit of uh, getting used to with the welder. I feel like that gas, because I'm using the because I'm using the argon from the TIG right now. I feel like it welds a little bit differently. I had to turn the wire speed up faster than I normally would. Um, so I feel like there was a little bit of adjustment there, but not too bad. So I do have a couple other pieces I gotta cut, do the other side, but it is the end of my night, end of my weekend. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this video edited and I'll finish up the rest of this in the next video probably. And then after that, I can start working on like getting the brake lines and stuff in there. I feel like I wanna do that before I put the engine and transmission back in and I should be getting the heads for the engine probably in the next couple of weeks and then I can start working on getting the motor back together and the transmission back together. This stuff has just been kind of sitting here all neglected. I do have uh, the Jake's and the CK trans brakes in there. The Jake's is actually underneath there but that's the one I ended up getting metal in so I gotta clean that stuff out really good. Then go through and double check this and either clean or replace parts uh, in there that might have been affected. But other than that it's coming along pretty good. I'm, I'm kind of excited about this. I've like I said a million times I've always wanted this truck to be lower and now we're finally doing it so cool stuff. See you next time.